Good evening, Salusi. We want to thank God for this uh, week. It has been impressed on me to draw from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 35, the first four verses. I'm reading. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Verse 2, And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Verse 3, Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Verse 4, So they gave Jacob all the foreign goods which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak tree which was by Shechem. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. I want even to thank you for this time that you have allowed us as a church to come before you. We pray therefore that you may make things right with us, especially as fathers in our homes, fathers in the church, and above all, fathers everywhere. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a, a little bit of uh, the background. Jacob is camped at Shechem with his family. And the word comes to the old man, Jacob. God speaks to Jacob and says, you have to move to Bethel. As soon as uh, the word came to Jacob concerning the movement of the family, he makes a very important observation to say this family has a work to do. There is a great work to be done before the family moves to Bethel. So the father, the priest of the home, has a work to do. He accepts the responsibility to work in his family. The lesson that we get first and foremost is that the movement from Shechem to Bethel was a spiritual call to Jacob. And as Jacob listened to the call, he looked at his family and uh, told himself that as the family should move, there is a work to be done. And the work was to purify themselves before they would move. So Jacob made an altar call to the family. Very courageous men. It's something to make a call in church. 
and appeal to brothers here to stand up and you pray with them. But Jacob is different. He makes an altar call to his wives to say things are not well in the camp. They are not well in the church and they cannot be well in the church before they are well back home. So he makes an altar call in his family. And I was asking myself to say, how many times have I preached to many people who are not my family members? I've counted quite a number of uh, presentations that I've made, but I've then asked myself further to say, how many times have I preached to my family? And not only preaching to my family, but even making an altar call to my family, where the family is seated and I make an altar call and say to them, let's put away the foreign gods that are amongst us. The sermons are few, if not none. And I want to ask my fellow Amo members to say, how many times have you preached to your own family? How many times have you made an altar call to your wife? So lesson number one is that there must be a preparation before we move from Shechem to Bethel. On the 7th of August, we are moving to the campsite. Is it well in our families? You may be surprised that the very same man who is preaching to you this evening is found beating the wife. If that is the situation, can you then make a call in your own family? Can you really sit down with your sons and daughters and ask them before we go down to the campsite and ask them to put away the foreign gods amongst the family? So this was the preparation that our patriarchs would engage in. The greatest Amo man is a man who will even make an altar call to himself. I want to believe that if I'm to make an altar call to my sons and daughters, I must also make an altar call to myself. Because they will ask me and say, old man, what about yourself? You don't talk to so and so. You don't see eye to eye with so and so. You even avoid them on campus here. What camp meeting are you going to? If there are some colleagues on campus whom you don't talk to. So an ammo man will be one who is able to preach to himself, preach to the wife, and preach to the children at large. Lesson number two, you have to be sensitive as a father. Sense that things are not well. Don't sense the weakness of the church because this church that is here is a composition of families. So it is the family that should start with the sensitivity to say, I can smell something in this home. Allow me, church, to say, there should be an evening where I say to my family, family, things are not well. I will not rush to come and raise a hand to disfellowship someone before I have disfellowshipped my very own son. 
thought his fellowship should start home. Just fellowship your daughter, just fellowship your son. Then come here, sit in the church board, discuss a disfellowship issue, and raise your hand with a free conscience that you have done marvelous work. You have been sensitive. I, I, I really don't want to be sensitive here, come here and say a lot of things. The, 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 the church of God has fallen, has, has, has my family not fallen at all. So let's be sensitive. If we are to be called armor members, high priest of our homes, this fellowship at home, censure at home, then we can actually come and do marvelous work in the house of the Lord. The last lesson that I would want us to draw as I close, the response of the family. If you read carefully the fourth verse, it says here, so they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had. They had them. So you would want to say there was some bit of a delay here in moving from Shechem to Bethel. Why the delay? Because the wives of Jacob, Rachel and Leah, had to surrender their gods. After that, the children of Jacob had to do likewise. And you know, Jacob had, uh, had an army, a very big uh, a, a gathering around him. They had all to give up the foreign gods. So it took him time. But they responded positively. And Jacob was blessed. It blessed his soul. And the move was effected. Can we have uh, these responses noted in our homes? Our wives responding, reconciling with, uh, with the Lord. Our children responding and reconciling with the Lord. Hence, we can close and agree that we have more to fear within than from without. Our greatest challenge, church, as we prepare for the 2022 camp meeting, is not so much to come and uh, preach here. It's more for me to preach at home and make a call and ask and expect our spouses to stand up back home there. Greatest challenge that we have this evening is not arranging for transport to take us to the campsite. That, that will come later, church. Let's make an altar call to our sons and daughters when they stand or respond to the altar call, and we have prayed home there, we can then arrange which pickup car is going to take us to the campsite. How are we going to the campsite? When we have reconciled with each other, forgiven each other, have embraced each other, we are now true brothers then we can talk of going to the campsite. I'm not going to make a call here, but I'm just challenging us all to go and make altar calls at our homes. Shake your very own home. Shake yourself as much as I'm going to shake myself as I prepare for the 2022 camp meeting. Shake my sons, shake my daughters, 
and even shake my daughters in law. Make an altar call at home. May God bless the reading of his word.